All right, buckle up for some wild tales from the pawn shop universe. A dude walks in trying to return a wonky iPhone, swearing he got it from here. Plot twist, no receipt, and he even tried blaming a random worker. Now that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got ladies claiming purse hostage situations and others pulling broken TV emotional sagas. Here are the scammers being caught on Hardcore Pawn. This dude who gets totally jacked in Detroit loses everything, even his watch. So he hits up this pawn shop to sell some stuff and make his way back to sunny California. Good, man. I'm Les. Philip, nice to meet you, sir. I'm here from California to do some construction, you know, buy some homes. Made the wrong turn, got robbed. And everything, dude, all wow. my cash. I got nothing left, dude. I got a watch. I'm trying to get some money so I can sure. get back to California. Les hears the guy's sob story, feels some sympathy, and offers 80 bucks for the watch. Not a fortune, but the guy was probably expecting pocket change, so not bad, right? How much did you need? Three, four hundred bucks just to get on a plane or a bus. He brought me in a watch, a good brand, but it wasn't worth the kind of money that he was asking for. Well, the bad news is those aren't diamonds in it. What do you mean? It's glass. No. Yeah. No way. I can go 80 bucks. 80 bucks. But no, our hero feels insulted, thinks his watch is gold or something. He's like, bro, normally I get 500 bucks for this watch and you're offering me 80? Rip off. Normally we go 50, but I'm gonna give you 80 because I like your story. Les isn't budging though, he's standing firm at $80. Now the guy's boiling, calls Les and everyone in the shop garbage. Like my story? So getting robbed is a good story. No, I came over here to Detroit and you guys robbed me. I didn't rob you. You might as well have. You're trying to give me 80 bucks for my watch. How the is that not robbing me? You get $30 more than we normally go. Detroit, man. This ain't gonna happen in Orange County, man. People who are here are garbage, and you're garbage, man. You. Don't come in with us, because we'll you up. Then, bam, it's on. Our guy tries to snatch his watch back, but Les is like, nah, -uh, not today. Things get spicy real fast, but he's having none of it. Bump back the Detroit way. Go. Yeah. Give me my right. watch. Outside. Garbage give me man. my watch. No. Give me my watch, Outside. please. Give me my watch. Outside. Give me my watch now. Get your hands off me. Or county. A lot better than this. No one's in the Detroit. In the D, we are all tough. Let's go. Let's do it. So this customer walks into the shop with this antique necklace, claiming it's been passed down through generations. Can you help me, sir? I'm trying to get a nice deal on my antique necklace. It's been passed down from generation to generation. My grandfather gave it to me, OK? Les isn't exactly doing cartwheels, because this necklace isn't blinged out with diamonds or gold, just some crystals. But the customer's on a mission for a sweet deal, even if it's not a precious metal masterpiece. My grandfather gave it to him. But Les, being more into precious metals than history, isn't interested. So how much can I get? Well, you can't get anything. It's not diamonds, it's not gold, it's just crystals. Now hold up, Les spots the customer's rings and gets that twinkle in his eye. But the customer's all like, I want a deal on the necklace, dude. Les, though, is playing hardball, saying they only dance with precious metals. No crystals invited to this ball. Customers' rings catch Les's eye. I'll take your rings. Your rings ain't for sale today. How much would you pawn this for? I won't take that in pawn because we only take precious metal. Now cue the shouting match. Back and forth negotiations, but it's like a standoff and no deal is going down. Now, take it. Well, I think you need to work something out with me, man. What are you standing here for, man? He's like, Tell me, brother. It's antique, man. Nope. The customer tries negotiating with Les, but no deal is struck. The security, though, offers a deal of their own. Customers are not thrilled, yelling about deals and fairness. It's a bit of a scene, you know? But here's the twist. Les finally gives in and says, all right, give me those rings. Customer storms out, still yelling a bit. Oh man, antique shop life. Am I right? I'm antique, bro. I don't want to talk. Me and you. No deal. Deal. No deal. How much you gonna give me for? I'm gonna start running away out the door. Hey, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, bro, man. Hold on. I can leave on my own. Hey, what's up, bro. big fella? Have a nice day. Game yourself. 
Give me the ring. I'll take the ring in pawn. Don't worry about it. These two guys roll up to the pawn shop claiming they got hustled out of their laptops and dropping hints that a shop employee might be in on it. Stuff back. There's two guys out here that are saying they were scammed out of their laptops. Les, the big boss, gets called in to handle this mess. As the duo spills their story, turns out they handed their laptops to some lady outside the shop, lured in by the promise of cash and laptop return. Tell me. She pawned two of our laptops, and she told us she was gonna give us the money and the laptops back because she knew some, she knew somebody. Les is legit shocked. These guys expecting help after a sketchy deal? Nah, no way. You can see it on his face. Neither. Okay. Wait. You pawned something. Yes. She had the ticket. When did you pawn it? Today. Today. Now the guys want Les to switch the ticket for the laptops, but Les is playing detective. He's like. When did this supposed pawn deal go down? Today, they claim, Les smells something fishy and wonders if his employees are pulling a fast one. Out of his way to help them. That's what we were trying to, to contact the owner because we want to- I am the owner. owner. I'm just trying to switch the ticket so she can't have them. can, it's in her name. Legally, Les says the laptops belong to the lady. He can't just hand them over. The guys are desperate, suggesting a name switch on the ticket. But Les is like, nah, those laptops are technically hers. I wanted to know if I can't do it because according to law, they belong to her, not you. Oh my god, Sam. Okay, so Les is in the mood. If they can ID the employee involved, he'll hand back their computers. They leave, but they can't deliver. Depending whoever the employee is. If you can find out which one of my employees, you give me the guy's name, I'll give you the computers. Find me out what I need to know, I can make magic happen. Less a pawn shop pro suggests they hit up the cops and file a report. Guys are desperate, try to negotiate, but Les shuts down any rule bending. Every uh, transaction we did today is still accounted for, so it's here. All you guys need to do is fill out a police report. So we can handle it that way. Les shuts down any notion of bending the rules, highlighting that their laptops belong to the lady. Any way I can just switch the name? No, I no, because they're in her name. They technically belong to her. And they don't belong to her. Les makes it clear they're not getting their stuff back without paying for it. If any of that. Inside job, and once we figured out, we came back and told, trying no, to no, tell no, no, you. No, oh, that's not the way no, it went. That's not the way it went. No. The way it went was you pawn your laptops to this pawn shop. Les drops the truth bomb: no laptops without paying. It's a lesson on greed. Here's the way it works. Nobody gets shit out of pawn without paying for it, and nothing goes out the back door. The boy still thought, hold up. So this dude walks into the shop all chill, just looking for some help with the table. But out of nowhere, he switches to R-rated mode, throwing around some colorful language. He lay on this mother. This is a sex table. Damn, I'll get some on this mother. Come on, Ashley, man. Les isn't having any of it. Bitch, that's who I've been screaming for. Come here. Get your ass over and shut up. Oh. He's like, Ashley, we need backup. Shut this down. Now it's getting wild. Dude is on a bed. There's commotion. It's like a party, but not the good kind. You kicked in the face. Look, let me ask you something. No, you shut. be quiet. Look, come this way, baby. If you let me, I'll be slapping that ass. Les steps in and drops the truth bomb. We're not turning this place into a free for all. But hold on. He's not just playing referee. There's the threat of a face kick. <laughs> Yikes. No, I, 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 you don't think you're talking to me? My man, man. Really? You don't think so? You don't disrespect my daughter and my Les isn't messing around. He tells the customer to get off the bed, making it crystal clear, don't mess with my family. It's family. I'll tear that up, boy. Tear that up. Tear that up. Get out of here. Tear that up. Get out of here. Oh, understand that? Don't the customer throws out an apology, but man, what a scene, right? Oh, my yeah, kid. I'm sorry, man. Don't I'm, with sorry, my kid. I'm sorry, Les. I'm sorry, man. This guy, Mark Hollingsworth, waltzes into the shop with the kind of sketchy idea. He's all like, I own this company dealing with watches, cars, and parking problems. But trust me, his sales pitch is as smooth as sandpaper. Yes, Mark Hollingsworth. Mark Collingsworth. Do you have a uh, company out that does any of your, you know, watches your lot or anything like that, takes any of the cars out? We do. Right off the bat, it's clear Mark's trying some passive aggressive marketing. Les isn't buying it though. Mark's still pushing, suggesting towing away illegally parked cars. Les, smelling potential scams, puts his foot down. No signing anything. 
Well, Better I mean, business venture than what? Well, then probably what you're working out right now. Man, I must be missing something. Okay, well, well, there's nothing to be missing. If somebody's parked illegally, we want to be... A Tension builds as Mark insists on linking their businesses. Les draws the line saying Mark can't come in and shake him down. It gets really intense and Les gives Mark an ultimatum. Leave or get tossed out? Uh, I want the business. We're kind of working the area right here. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to give you... Some Less, not one to back down, successfully kicks Mark out. Mark, feeling a bit defiant, says he'll be back, but Les isn't bothered. He's like, you're not welcome here. But he just won't get a clue. This is going to be our business as well. No, right? it's definitely not going to be. Listen. No, you listen. You are not coming into my business and trying Very nice way to promote a business. Right here, Here's the way it's now. going to work, sir. You can leave nicely or we can throw your ass out. I tried coming Nobody in Nobody comes here. in here shaking me down. Do you understand that? Les has got grit and refuses to fall for dodgy deals. Mark's attempt to twist his way into a business thing totally backfires, leaving Les with one message. His pawn shop isn't a playground for shady schemes. I'm not leaving anywhere right there. Yeah, of course you're not. I'll be back in this. All right, come on back. And him, and Well, at least they managed to buckle up for this one. A dude storms in on a mission to find the perfect anniversary gift, a watch for his wife. It's their anniversary too. Sweet vibes, right? The next customer comes to the store in search of the perfect anniversary gift. I need to get a watch for my wife's anniversary. It's not your anniversary too? But hold on, he hits us with a curveball wants to trade in a necklace that supposedly belonged to his grandma. Mine too. She said, this belonged to my grandmother. Probably worth a lot of money. I just want to bring it up and see what you think. Maybe we'll do a trade for a watch. Plot twist. Les finds out it's a fake. Oof. But this dude still got game, pushing for that watch trade. When he discovers that the necklace he brought is fake. Well, do you really want me to tell you what I think? They're not real. But it was fake when it was made, and it's still fake. What are you gonna give me for this? I wanna trade for a watch. It's fake, I'm not interested. Les ain't fooled though. He's like, nah, that necklace is worth zilch. The persistent husband insists on making a deal. Give me a, let me see what you got in watches. And so what are you saying? This is worth absolutely nothing. Absolutely. The situation. And then it gets spicy. The persistent husband starts trash talking Les's family. Oh, <laughs> big mistake. I am? Okay, I've seen your wife. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. Oh man, big mistake. Les draws the line telling him there are two things you don't talk about. Wives and family. I don't think so. This crosses a line for Les. Listen, mother Two things you don't talk about. Wife and my family. The little boy in that. It heats up. A little scuffle breaks out and security has to step in. Badass daughter of yours. Get off of me, don't. Where you got to go? Les isn't letting it slide. He's like, get out and don't let the door hit you on the way. Slide. Hurts you guys so bad. Uh -huh. well. Better get the two people, Batman. Get the out of here. Two, three, four, open door. Ashley's dealing with this guy who wants to pawn his grandma's ring, and it's kind of a bummer because she recently passed away. Sad vibes. My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. Well, I was like hoping to see what I could get for this. Okay, so whose ring is this? My grandma's. Ding. But plot twist, Ashley checks the ring and bam, it's fake gold. The guy can't believe it goes from sad to frustrated. How much is your rent? 39. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not real. What you mean it's not real? It's not. Ashley suggests pawning other stuff like a TV, but that just makes him more annoyed. Leave. Well, basically, y'all sit up here and waste my time talking to you. You don't waste your time. If you have a TV, you can pawn your TV. What the f I look like on the Monty? Now he's all, I want to talk to someone else. More irate. I need to speak with somebody. Big snuggle buddy Byron steps in, sense of trouble. The guy's getting more heated, and Byron's like, calm down, lower your voice. Tell right, so, me lower, what your to voice. Do. Don't lower your voice. Don't put your finger in lower my face. Lower Don't your voice. put your you finger in my Then it gets crazy. The guy threatens Ashley. Byron's not having it, tells him to leave. But nope, the guy stays put so Byron has to physically escort him out. Ashley and Byron are like the peacekeepers, dealing with the chaos and keeping the shop in order. Headed to threaten Ashley, an action that wasn't very well received. Bitch, I'll be back, bitch. Let On the go. ground, mother You talking that now, get the hell out of here. 
Here comes a young man eager to make a deal at the shop. A young man comes into the shop. He's waving something around, claiming he wants at least a hundred bucks for it. Less the owner isn't having it, saying it's not worth that much and offers him twenty bucks instead. To the shop. I'm trying to see how much I can get for this. I'm trying to get like I'm trying to get at least a hundred for it. Hundred dollars? Yeah. I won't even be able to sell it for near that. So how much can you give me? Huh? Twenty bucks. The young man is not thrilled, insisting he needs at least a hundred bucks. I need my money. I'm I understand. need at least a hundred dollars for this. You pay two hundred for that? I ever heard? Two hundred. I'll sell you. Man. I'll sell you like four of them for less than that. Why would I want to buy? I'm trying to get. Tippers start rising, and he's yelling for more staff, demanding to see a manager ASAP. Les, sensing the commotion, steps in. Dollar. Why is there more staff out here? Get some help. I've been waiting for an hour. I need to see a manager right now. The situation escalates quickly as the young man disrespects Les, calling him old man. Not. What the f you gonna do, old man? Who are you calling? This sets Les off, and in a moment of rage, something regrettable happens. Les takes charge, telling the young man it's time to go, and the drama unfolds. Thing he will regret later. Who the f you calling? Really, mother? I got this. I got it. You wanna give me more than twenty dollars? Les takes matters into his own hands. Time to go. You. Nikki's got this customer who's upset about the cash offered for her golden bracelet. Oh, they usually give me three. Okay, gold drops, so uh, that's not my problem. She start she expected three hundred dollars like last time, but Nikki says it's two hundred and fifty now because the gold price did a little dance. She started clamoring for a manager over and over, like that was gonna solve anything. I want to speak to your manager. What price did you give her? Two fifty. And you need how much? Three. Okay. Just because the price of gold is going down, that's. Now this customer isn't having it. She's like, I want a manager. But surprise, Ashley steps in. Not a manager, but trying to explain the gold market. The customer's having none of it and wants that extra fifty bucks. Not understanding. No, I want my fifty dollars. You got the fifty dollars. If you want to. No. Since it's clear she won't be getting the amount she was hoping for, she decides when she realizes that bonus cash isn't happening, the customer flips the script, blaming the gold price drop for her unhappiness. She's dead set on getting her money despite market facts. Hey. Gold has gone down. Give me my money. Is she serious? Yeah. You had to bring him around because you sick. But Nikki's had enough of the drama. She tells the customer to hit the road saying disruptive behavior isn't cool and well she's not welcome anymore customers out never to return Here's have a good day Whoa. and walk I ain't never coming back to this store you ain't big have a good day have a good you day. ain't big no, have i will day. drop you have a good a young man from dallas walks in all proud of the watch that his grandma gave him thinking it's worth 500 bucks but Les takes a look and points out some issues saying it's not worth much a man from dallas walks in <laughs> what you got here? Uh, I watched my grandmother gave me. Uh huh. And how much did you want? Uh, I'm trying to get five. The guy's not having it. He wants to talk to someone who knows their stuff. Yeah, you see these this, this coloration on the side? No. Rose color metal in there looks like copper. I see gold. But it's not gold. I wouldn't be able to take it. Can't give me nothing. Les tries to reassure him, but things go south. The guy's all frustrated, claiming his watch is worth 500 bucks, demanding to talk to the jeweler. Sorry, can I talk to somebody that knows what you're doing? You can talk to me. Unless you're both me, man. I have to get home, man, this week. I understand that, but it's got no value. It does have value. Things begin to go south. This is a bunch of bull****, man. I want to pawn my watch that's worth $500. Let me tell you, have you talked to my jewel? Now, when the jeweler says it's basically worthless, things get wild. The guy goes off, and before you know it, he's getting escorted outside unceremoniously. Well, this guy's been in the jewelry business all of his life. He wants a $500 loan on a watch. What can you do with him? What are we doing? Well, I wouldn't really call him names. We're not calling you any names. You outside, he's still fuming, dropping some colorful words. It's a full-blown scene at the pawn shop. The guy wants his watch back, but Les isn't having it. Nothing. Stop being a bitch. This is the worst pawn shop in the city. It's a piece of shit, dude. Give me my mother. Man, come over here and pick this bitch up. Yo, you get him. 
A customer eager to test the bike's functionality pushed to take it for a spin right inside the store. Horsepower I got. A lot. 600 cc's, my man. Seth, smelling something fishy, hesitates but agrees to check it outside. The customer, though, pushes to ride it down the road, making Seth suspicious of his motives. It's just pretty wild. I don't see what it's got. Can I get the keys? I want to see if it starts. I'm not turning it on in here, but if you want, we can take it outside. Now, it's clear that this customer might have some sketchy plans. Seth, playing it smart, doesn't let the guy take control of the bike. Hey, than a person he just met. You can't let me take the bike down the road. Now, the customer, thinking that he's all tough, brings in a friend, calling him his dog, trying to challenge Seth's authority. Let's try it out. Who's this guy? That's my dog. That's your dog? That's my dog. But guess what? Seth's got backup. Byron and the crew. Byron is known for his muscles ready to keep the peace. The customer, yeah, feeling overconfident, tries to provoke Byron, but it backfires big time. Byron takes charge and kicks him out. Understand? Why? You got somebody's gonna stop me? Byron. Come on. Man, I don't need your dog. Come on, dog. You get over here and take care of this light work. Over. Byron's big presence shows that loud barks don't always mean a big bite. The troublemakers learn the hard way that messing with Byron is a bad idea. Oh. Don't know where it from. It don't matter where the I'm from, man. You stay the out of my face. That's all I can tell you. Show you whose face I'm getting. This your dog, right? You get up in my face. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Drama in the store, and Byron's not having any of it. These mother I guess I had a big bark and a big bite. Because I pushed both of them out of the it's time for a showdown as the customer's all worked up about his busted lounger from the shop and he wants his money back. But surprise, he didn't keep the receipt. Money back. Ab lounger I bought here, man, workout. Now, this thing obviously couldn't handle what I was doing on it. So, two days later, it don't even work. Let's lay it out. No receipt, no refund. But this customer's not having it. He's all about the money, not interested in an exchange, and things get loud. Security's on standby necessary to keep the receipt. I don't have a receipt. I didn't think I needed to keep it. There's nothing I can do for you without a receipt. If you had the receipt, I could give you an exchange. I could give you some. I don't want an exchange because it's probably going to be some again. How about you just get my money and then we won't, you know, we won't have any more problems with this. The customer keeps pushing, not caring about security or anything else. He's dead set on getting his money back, even throwing out threats. I need my mother money back. Not gonna do yes, anything. And like all this uh, That's security great. standing around or whatever. I don't give a rat's ass about that. There better be some money. When he sees security, he gets a bit jittery but doesn't back down, demanding even more backup. It's a feral showdown at the pawn shop. He reaches the point of no return. Oh, son. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Really? Let's go. Let's go. I told you, man. We Come got on. you, buddy. Bring Let's a go. couple more. Come we on. We got you. Bring a few. Yeah. The Gold family gets hit with a shocker when they catch their own employee, Christina, in a sneaky scheme. They're all curious about Christina's shady moves. Turns out she's been pulling off a scam right under their noses. During busy times, she's cooking up fake loan tickets, sneaking money from the pawn shop. The family's jaws drop. Total disbelief. At your merchandise. Yes. I wrote up the loan. Okay. I wrote it up, but I only did it when we were busy. So they confront Christina about it, and it's a mess. Her crafty plan makes it tough to figure out how much she stole. The numbers they're throwing around hint at thousands of dollars gone. Money off of them bit by bit. And so you, you wrote it up for three dollars Yes. And what about this piece right here? How much did you give a loan on for? The Golds are just stunned at their own employees' audacity and cunning moves. Stolen. Would you wrote up a fake ticket and stole money from us? I can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. Les tries to cut a deal, saying spill the beans and maybe they'll go easy. But Christina's all defiant, giving vague answers and stalling. How much money do you think you've stolen from American Jewelry? Would you say it's over a thousand dollars? I can't. That, I understand I can't, what is that, that is. Yes or no? When the police get involved, it hits them. This is serious stuff. Les gives Christina a last warning, saying once that door opens, her fate is sealed. Even with a chance to cooperate, Christina's not budging, so the Golds have to hand her over to the cops. You're just stealing from us 
all alone without any knowledge of anybody else stealing from us, correct? Last chance, because once that door opens and the cops come in here, I have no option. With the way she had to do their dues. Okay. All right, check this. A customer walks in wanting a receipt for something she already owns. Item that they already owned. We don't give out receipts. What you mean you don't give out receipts? When we give you your item, that's your receipt. That's proof that you paid to take it out. I need this receipt to show what I spent my money on. So I do business with... Lust says the item itself is proof of purchase, but she's not having it. She insists on a receipt to show what she spent her money on. With the answer. Bitch, give me my mother receipt. I need a receipt. My man needs to know what the f I spent my money on, and you sitting there looking all stupid and you can look at Even with Les trying to talk sense, things go south. The customer gets all aggressive, throws around some colorful words, and even threatens physical harm. Security steps in, and the manager gets called, but it's getting more heated. Bitch, I beat your mother ass. I ain't got time to play with your ass. Somebody give me a mother manager up in this bitch. The manager shows up, but Les is done. He tells the customer it's time to hit the road, but she's not backing down. What the f I've been doing with my money? Can I get I don't know what the f you've been doing with your money. So you gonna sit there and act like that? Yes. Bitch, I'll burn this mother down. Okay, it's time for your f ass to get out of here. Security tries to escort her out, but she resists, causing a scene and accusing them of making her fall. Hands off me! You better get your ooh, bitch! Oh, no the f Ooh, oh, bitch! No the f No the f Y'all gonna make me fall like this, bitch! It's a tense situation. Drama at its peak in the pawn shop. customer walks in dead set on selling his jacket at a price he thinks is fair. Rightfully deserves in mind. I'm looking to get some money for it, man. I'd like to get, and I'm going to get, about 50 or 60 bucks. Can't walk out of here. But things get wild as he brushes off small talk, just wanting the cash ASAP. How long have you owned this jacket? What is, what, what's it matter what, how long I've owned it? Just, just give me some money, man. The employee tries to chat, but the customer is all about getting a good deal because of medical needs. Negotiations kick in, and the customer flat out rejects offers, aiming for 40, 50, or even 60 bucks. Problem I need to uh, deal with, man. All I want is some money. Give me 40 bucks, 50 bucks, man. At least 60. Now, Les, who's usually quick with this stuff, finds himself in a twist. He throws 20 bucks on the table, making things even more tense. Normally, he'd have booted him out for being rude. I'll buy it from you for 20. 20? Oh, yes. Are you nuts, bro? Security jumps in, forming a shield around Les, expecting trouble. You're not as nuts as me, though, brother. Give me you wouldn't score, have man. a clue how nutty I can be. I'm a crazy mother. But the customer's now backing down, claiming he's capable of unpredictable actions. Les holds his ground, hinting at the security measures, saying being reckless won't end well for the troublemaker. Imposing man. Want to get hurt today? I wouldn't be too stupid if I was you. Buddy, so what if I jump at you? Oh, I don't want to do that, man. See that big gun in this mother? As things calm down, Les gives props to the security team for keeping order. The customer, realizing the odds aren't in his favor, acknowledges the security team's lucky presence. Somewhat peaceful conclusion. They're lucky they got you, man. Yeah, because okay. if we don't have him, then we got him. Well. And if we don't have him, then we got him. And then we got three other mother behind you. Ashley, a customer walks in dead set on selling his watch. Put his watch from here. It's worth a 20. Mm -hmm. How much you pay for it? Made like. No beating around the bush, he wants at least 400 bucks, claiming the watch is worth 820. Les, keeping it real, says he might pay around seven bucks for it. But the customer not having it wants an F for the watch, meaning 400 bucks. Hey, seven. Come on, tell me the truth. What'd you really pay? Tell you the truth, man. Yeah, Come on, give me four. Yeah. Give me four for this watch, man. Be, Come on, man. Be. Asking for four hundred dollars. As things heat up, the customer starts yelling about having a baby on the way and struggling. Musk congratulates him but sticks to his offer. The customer, frustrated, keeps pushing for 400 or even 450, raising his voice and venting about his living situation. Come on, give me like 450 for this Why watch. Why are you yelling at me? I got a baby on the way, dog. Congratulations. I'm sick, living, I'm sick living at the crib, man. Come on, give me 400 for this watch. Then it takes a wild turn. 
the customer starts insulting Les, calling the place a ho-ass place and breaking things. Security steps in, telling him to clean up his mess, but the customer's not backing down, hurling vulgarities and challenging Les. Baby, you already gonna do this bull to me, dog? You said it, I didn't say it. Hey, give me some cash for this watch, man. 400? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, this is a bull ass place, man. This whole ass. Les decides he's had enough, goes around the counter, showing he won't take any disrespect. The customer, seemingly oblivious, keeps up the aggressive act. Lifting less and breaking things. Tip dog, man. Dog, man. It's a bull. Uh, excuse me. Hey, bitch, pick bitch, it up. Uh, you call what? Hey, what the f you call him a bitch? Security tries to keep the peace, but the customer's attitude pushes less to the edge. It's tense, like a battleground of words and emotions in the pawn shop. He goes around the counter to take matters into his own hands. Touch me, homie, dog. Touch me, dude. Right, I'm off this bitch, man. F y'all, man. For real. F y'all, I'm off this bitch, dog. Ashley's dealing with a customer who says his watch is messed up. But surprise, he doesn't have a receipt. Hi. Hi. How are you? Not good. I got a little issue here. What's your issue? Bought this watch from you guys a couple days ago and it's not working. The guy claims he dropped a bunch of cash but can't remember how much or show a receipt. How'd you pay? Cash. Cash. How much did you spend? I spent a lot of money on that thing, man. Okay, number one, I'm not swearing at you out of respect. Ashley, smelling something fishy, decides to play along and points out a problem with the watch. She's like, Rolex watches shouldn't have this issue. But here's the kicker. The guy throws a veiled threat, hinting at consequences if Ashley was a trained cop. Do you have context? No. You can see well, right? I can see very well. What does it say? Now Ashley's not having it. She keeps her cool, uses her training, and delivers a swift response. A choke slam. But she decided to play along with his games. Come here, I'm gonna show you exactly where your Rolex is. And by the way, if you wear a tank top, I'd advise you work out some more. So come on. I'll work your the guy, realizing he underestimated the situation, backs off quickly. Message delivered. Threatening behavior won't fly in the store. Really? How about it? Get the f off. Get the f off. A lot of people probably don't know. I'm trying. The customer's still demanding what he thinks he paid for, but Ashley's chill. She hands back his cash, making it clear that being confrontational won't change the outcome. I want what I paid for! Here you go! Cash! I want what I paid for! Bitch! A mom and daughter storm into the shop, all worked up about a stolen ring. Ocean has Ashley's attention. This is my daughter. She stole my mama's ring. I need you to do whatever you gotta do, but... But the twist is, they spill that they've got no receipt or ID. Ashley, one of the employees, catches wind of the drama and steps in. The mom's dead set on getting the ring back, but no proper paperwork is a roadblock. How you gonna sit here and tell me? You told me you brought it here, right? Now what we gonna do? There's nothing what the I can do. What the hell we gonna do? Chris I have watch to have my her mother. ID I do want my ring. Ashley seems to. Ashley tries to calm things down, saying, "Hey, lower your voices. We're in the store." She asks the daughter about any ticket or documentation, but there's none. Hello, our voice. You're in our store. You took your grandma's ring. Yes. Okay, so where's your ticket? I don't have it. Did you press charges against your daughter for being a thief? I'm not pressing no charges against my daughter. Then you can't get it back. No. The then Ashley throws a curveball. She asks if the mom wants to press charges against her own daughter for stealing. The mom's torn but decides against it. Problem is, no charges mean no ring without the right papers. Else Man, I'm not gonna quiet I'm not walking away without my damn right. Both mother and the pawn shop sticks to its guns, and both mom and daughter have to leave empty-handed. On their way out, they make a fuss, blaming the shop for involving the police. The staff stays strong, saying it's not their fault, but the daughter's actions that landed them here. In the American Jewelry and Loan Store, strange customers are pretty common. But occurrence. Can I please get my coach off out of here on a display? How are you today? Now, here's a wild one. A bold lady insists she owns the monopoly on all things pink, demanding her coat back. I need my coat. Everybody know in the hood I rock pink. I need my coat. An employee trying to be polite asks for the pawn ticket, but she's not having it, totally convinced that the coat is hers. This lady refuses to listen. 
Can how I long, get my coat? How long you been going can through I, the change of life? Can I get my coat? Can I get my coat? Right there. Give me my Then she cranks it up a notch. She calls for security, demanding the store owner. Her coat demands echo through the place, causing a scene. Byron jumps in like a pro. Despite her loud protests, he shows her the exit, keeping the peace in the store. The owner of the store. Out of my I'm store. not going no mother. I need my coat. Never come in this bitch. There you go. The whole pink coat saga becomes quite the spectacle. Byron managed to toss her out while she kept on screaming for the coat that clearly wasn't hers. Coming down, y'all got my up in there. Bring me the. I want pink. I'm a pink thing. The day kicks off with a grumpy customer claiming his recently bought coat shredded while he was riding. Thing is, he's got no receipt to back up his story. Person. Just bought this coat here about a week ago, riding down the road and the thing just shreds up. Uh, I want my money back. Now, despite having a receipt, this guy thinks that's enough proof, ignoring the store rules. Karen, the staff on the case, stays cool and sticks to the policies. For cash. It's a little beat up to me. Yeah, you're telling me. I'm not very happy. Do you have your receipt? No. Isn't this receipt enough? No, it's not. I need a... The customer keeps pushing for a refund on a new coat, but Karen holds her ground, saying you need a legit receipt for any fix. Props to Karen for not letting opportunistic behavior slide. Now, I want my money back or I want another coat. Can't help you unless you have a receipt. All I want is another coat or I want my damn... As the talk goes on, it becomes clear. The customer is trying to pull a fast one, hoping to score another coat without proper verification. But Karen sees through it, keeping her cool and not giving in. Him? He got Karen. How about I just take one? Uh, well, I don't really recommend you. When the guy can't bend the rules his way, he gets all aggressive, hinting at causing a ruckus. Karen, though, stays calm and walks him out, stopping the situation from blowing up. That's how you handle tricky customers. Shredded to you? I'll take this whole damn wreck. Hold on, my man. Hold on, I'll my take man, this whole wreck. Barbara and her nephew Leon hit up Seth at the American Jewelry and Loan Store, all tangled up in a TV remote drama. Barbara, nice to meet you. And this is my nephew nice Leon. Nice Leon. Hey, Leon, nice to meet you. We buy the TV, but he got home and. So Leon bought a TV from the pawn shop three months back, but guess what? No remote. Turns out he pawned it without the original clicker, and now they want a replacement. He pawned about three months ago. Yeah, so we're up here now, and all he wants is a remote for his TV. Yeah. That's the barcode for the TV. Oh, you took the barcode off the TV no. if it didn't come with it. But Seth can't find the remote. He suggests checking the stock, but they're not having it. Frustration kicks in, and Barbara and Leon decide to make a scene, claiming the TV had a remote when pawned. Despite Seth's confusion, Barbara insists her nephew deserves a remote. When I rebought my TV, yeah. it didn't have a remote control. And right. I know I pawned the TV in with right. the remote control. Right. So right. why I don't have it now? He pawned the no. TV, it was a remote tool. You want to buy one? So you give my nephew his remote. Right. Facing potential chaos, Seth, keeping cool, decides it's time for Barbara and Leon to exit. Security steps in, escorting them out, putting an end to the chaos. Seth throws in a little note about the abundance of remotes in the store and wishes them a nice day. No doubt Seth has tolerance. You got one back there somewhere. I got lots of them. It's back there the somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No. It's back there. Go, okay, yeah, so go back there. Good job, Have a nice day. You're in Monty! Karen's at the store and things get crazy. A lady seems all chill talking about watches. Is your eye that you want me to pull out? I was kind of looking at some of these watches. Did you see her? But hold up. She suddenly accuses another customer of swiping her invisible phone. Yeah, you heard it right invisible. Karen, cool as a cucumber, questions the crazy claim. Giver is Byron Services. Where the hell is my phone? Something wrong? Yeah, my phone. I just let my phone. Did you take my phone? Take your phone. Turns out no phone was missing. Karen, with a bit of sarcasm, asks if someone took her invisible phone. Drama alert. The innocent customer is just baffled. For Karen. The lady frustrated that her trick failed goes off. Karen unknowingly adds fuel, mentioning the end of the lady's gangster years. Boom, emotional explosion. 
knowledge of. Yo, my <laughs> yo, y'all better get this right because I ain't got no, nothing. Please, yo, listen, crazy. Listen, listen. Crazy. Trying to chill things out, Karen tells the lady to calm down. The store, once quiet, turns into chaos. Karen's dealing with it, but man, unpredictable customers make it a wild ride. Proves a little too much. Hey. Yo, gangster years is over with, baby. Calm down. You ain't gonna need that cane. Go ahead. Karen's handling of the situation. Oof. Hey, 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 down. Chill out. Thanks, gangster, buddy. calm down. What you calm you down? You ain't that bad. Calm down. I am. On what seemed like an ordinary day at the shop, a quirky customer shows up at the shop claiming he wants to pawn some stuff. But get this, he's only got pictures of the items. Well, I got some pictures. I don't want to bring them up here. It's cold outside. Right. I got this one right here. Yeah. Nice little clock. Seth, being the sharp guy, quickly spots something fishy. Those pics look like they're straight from the internet. Sus, right? Well, Seth ain't playing around and says, no way I'm giving you a quote without checking the real deal. How much you looking for? I'm looking about $500. I can't quote without seeing the actual merchandise because just because you have a picture of it doesn't really mean that. The customer wants a $500 quote, but Seth is like, hold up, I need to see the actual stuff. Now Seth's on point, he knows pics can be deceiving, but the customer won't budge and Seth's suspicion grows. Without checking the goods, Seth says, no quote for you. You interested? Mm -hmm. I'm interested. But you, but you can't quote me what's, what I'm going to get, though. No, it's just a picture. I don't know exactly what you're going to be bringing in. I don't know if it's metal. I don't know I, if it's paper. I don't know if it's just a painting. I don't know. But the customer's persistent, not showing the item. Seth's had enough, and he calls in Byron to show the guy the door. Byron, following Seth's lead, kicks the guy out. Get the quote? No, sir. You're wasting my time and your time now, so bring it in. You know what? What? You. Have Come a nice on, day. Man. What you want to do? Do your yeah, do, do, do. Come on, do it. Do it. Say hello to the bad guy. Yeah. One more time. I'll call my expert then. Okay. You. No problem, bud. Right. Okay, check this out. A customer rolls in eyeing a $100 watch, thinking it's a done deal. But here's the twist. Her VIP card can't cover it. Just the basics, you know? She suggests her VIP card is like a gift card, and Byron's trying to clear things up, but she's not having it. All the drama starts. I'm trying though. Hi, excuse me. Yeah. Hi. I'm looking for a watch. Maybe about $100. $100 isn't a bad deal for a pretty watch. The customer expresses interest in a watch priced at 100 bucks, seemingly content with a deal which includes a $6 tax. This really looks good on you. It was 100. 100. I'll take it. Okay. Now we add tax on that. It'll be 106. All right. Now outside, Byron's still explaining like no loss just a card thing but the lady's not getting it she goes on a name calling spree unless the employee is left scratching his head at the unexpected drama store she should go there maybe they sell watches too all right gift card hundred dollar gift card these are not a gift cards the situation goes wild insults flying unfounded accusations and less is caught off guard it's like a crazy ride dealing with customers who expect the moon and the stars. The lesson here, some folks take things way too personally when things don't go their way. Drama, drama everywhere. Iron can explain the situation to her outside the store. So you telling me I'm losing $100? What is she gonna what say? What y'all don't understand up in here, okay? Because you well, she gonna about to lose, well, that right? The scene underscores the broader issue of customer entitlement and the propensity for some individuals to resort to aggression when their expectations aren't met. Ugliest two sisters I've ever seen in my life. Are you my sister? Hey, no. Sister, what up? Somebody wanna buy an offer for a gift? Seth's in the shop, right? Then this guy walks in all hyped up about wanting a PlayStation 3 for 70 bucks. But hold up, he's seen it cheaper elsewhere, so why is it even here? How much are your PlayStation 3s? How much you want to spend? Uh, I got seven. Seriously, he mentions having seen the same item for 70 to 80 bucks at other pawn shops, prompting the question of why he didn't pursue the purchase from those establishments instead. Good deposit if you want. You can make payments every 30 days. Keep it as long as you'd like. Does it come with a warranty? Seth, being cool, suggests payment plans and throws in a warranty. But this dude flips out, calling 70 bucks ridiculous and claiming he sells them for 100. Things get heated and Byron's on standby for security. It comes with an as is warranty. This is bull. I sell them for 100 bucks. That is ridiculous. Oh my God, it's 70. I want some. As the tension escalates, the customer raises his voice, 
Unbeknownst to him, Byron, the security presence, is prepared to intervene if the situation spirals out of control. Voice raised like that, we'd be more than happy to speak with you. Uh, we'll what's see. up on this for $70? Show me, show me 70 bucks. Seth tries to calm the storm, invites the guy to talk it out, but nope, confrontation is the name of the game. To cool things down, Seth throws a challenge. Show the cash if you're serious. But surprise, surprise, the dude can't show the money. So with Byron there, Seth basically says, adios. Right, big boy. Big boy. Right, big boy. Time to go. Push me, big boy. Here we go. What you want to do? What you want to do? I come down this my level. Beat your ass down here. Les is just doing his thing when suddenly a lady rolls in all fired up saying, I want my money back. I want my money back. I paid you $500 for this purse. I want my money back. Now, she claims that she dropped 500 bucks on a purse and now thinks that it's fake. But here's the kicker. The store doesn't do refunds for sold stuff. Les, smelling something fishy, asks for a receipt. You know, proof of purchase. But she's not having it, gets all sassy and threatens legal action without any proof. Half member scammed her. Let me gain my composure before anybody. Don't gain your composure. Before somebody goes Give and me slam, my money back. You sold me a fake purse. The purse. Now the receipt drama heats up. The grandma still sassy insists on a refund without proof. Les stands his ground, asking for some proof. Then she goes all dramatic, threatening to wreck her own cigarette. Les warns her, but she's still not stopping. Ma'am, do you have the receipt? I didn't give you a second when I gave you my money. Ma'am, I'm my trying money. not to really You lose took my control. money and I won't. Show me the receipt. I don't have a receipt. The lady's disruptive behavior goes a step further as she threatens to destroy her own property, a cigarette. Less recognizing the theatrics, warns against willful destruction and adds more potential claims to the already contentious situation. Proud. I please have my money. No, that's how to start it. You know what that stands for? What you is that? I want my money. Things get crazier. She starts making threats, even talking about hurting people. But Les, cool as a cucumber, says her threats won't shake him. I'm not. Put your cigarette out. Put, put it out. Get your hands off me. Put your cigarette Get out. Get your hands off me and I put it out. Give me my money. That's all I want is my money. Give me your card, because I'm going to sue your ass. I'm going to bust. I'm going to hit you. You're not going to bust nothing. I'll hit you. Well, I go got ahead. a son. I've been hit by much harder. Go ass. ahead. Well, get him. Yeah, right. All right. Stupid ass mother. A lady walks in thinking she's got a real gold chain to pawn, but the employee Ashley spots that it's fake. Yeah, she wants 250 bucks for it, but Ashley's like, nah, no can do. It's not real. The item was a fake after taking a look at it. Uh, pawn this train. Now, this lady starts making a scene, yelling and demanding the manager. Ashley's not backing down, standing her ground against the chaos. Okay, okay for how much? I want to get like 250. We won't be able to take this. Why you want me to take it? Because it's not real. What the f It is real. Ashley steps up, the lady still claiming her fake chain is real. Ashley's not having the yelling, setting a rule. No screaming aloud in the store. I want my mother money for Hi, me. excuse me. Why are you screaming? Excuse me, what? Get my money. This isn't real. It is real! You're not. Ashley, determined to maintain order, sets a clear boundary, emphasizing that screaming will not be tolerated in the store. Come and get it. One way or another. All right, well, I'll come and give it to you. Yeah. Why the f he said it's not real? You will not. Plot twist. Ashley offers a deal. She'll check the lady's watch, but no more screaming. The lady suddenly gets all chill, realizing she needs to cool it down. What can I get? Let me see your watch if you want me to help you. Hello? If you yell at me one more time, I'm seriously going to ask you to leave. I am not in the mood to hear your loud. Now Ashley sees a chance to help. She suggests pawning the watch for 250 bucks, and the lady, now calm, agrees. Ashley smoothly guides her through, proving that she can handle the drama while keeping things respectful. Drama sorted. Do you want me to let you pawn your watch for 250? I'll take 250. Wow, changing a tone now. Yeah. Want to well, follow me this way? Thanks for help. There's this guy who claims to be the last good man, but Seth's not buying it. This guy knows what he wants, cameras in this case, and Seth is all set to help him. I prefer cameras. What kind of good cameras you yeah, got? Yeah, whatever you need. Yeah, so some point oh, and shoot okay, right over here. here. Let me look at this black one right here. But hold up, trouble's brewing. 
The guy admits that he's got a short-term memory. Seth, being savvy, suggests paying up front, but Mr. Forgetful wants to shop around first, planning to keep the camera in his pocket. Seth's not vibing with that logic. You're shopping around. That's fine. Let's pay for it now, and then you can keep it in your pocket, and then you can keep shopping. Why can't I just pay for everything at the end of shopping? Then I'll hold the camera to your... Seth, smelling something fishy, won't let this guy stroll away with an unpaid camera. The customer protests, but Seth sticks to the rules, unfazed by the store's criticism. Hold, hold on to your camera until you're ready to buy something. But it makes no sense. I'm going to buy the You know camera. what? The, the best part of being the owner of this place, it doesn't have to make sense to everybody as long as it makes sense to me. Offering to pay up front, the customer isn't happy and throws shade at the store. Seth cools a cucumber, shows him the door, keeping things in check. That. Thank you, sir. But I want to buy the camera. Sure, $90, sir. Your store is a bunch of You f can leave, sir. Since no, I, no, if you won't let me buy it. Have a nice day, sir. I'm still shopping. Store sucks. A lady storms into the pawn shop, dead set on getting back her shiny new Dell laptop still in the box. There's a brand new Dell in the box, never been open. Never been open. Yes. Let me see. The shop says it was pawned, but she insists it wasn't. The employee checks the system, and yep, there's a code saying that it was pawned. Now she's not buying it and accuses the shop of shady business. B O W I E. She got something in pawn? Yeah, she does have a Refusing to accept this information, the customer accuses the shop of hiding her belongings without reason. However, the employee explains that there's a valid code for the item. Trying to keep it professional, the employee explains there's a legit code, suggests going to the windows for help, but she's not having it. Instead, she's getting more worked up doubting the shop's honesty and integrity. Oh, you have your fur coat, so you can go right over to the windows and make it. Thick. No, I want my computer. No, computer. But you have a fur coat in front. I, and I understand. And here's where it gets wild. She starts thinking that there's some big conspiracy against her. She's convinced the shop is teaming up with the rich tycoon to snatch her laptop. Things take a turn for the absurd. Y'all don't know how to talk to nobody, and I guess I'm, because talking... I'm the little dog that you can just you ain't tell no little me. dog. You're taller no, than no. I am. With a poor bitch's computer, check and give me my. Her frustration peaks, and she goes from claiming to be a sweet Christian lady to dropping a string of curses. She's a nice, polite Christian woman. Yeah, right. I think that you are being so despicable. A customer walks into the pawn shop all upset, thinking it's some charity spot. Now she's on a mission to get back her two TVs, claiming they were stolen. But here's the catch. No ID, no ticket, and she's causing a scene. Two TVs. I need your ID or the ticket. Uh, my what? ID or your ticket. The employee, being the voice of reason, explains this isn't a police station and suggests filing a report. She won't budge, insisting on her TV's pronto, even offering her name instead of proper info. The employee stands firm, saying they need a police report. If your items are missing, you should go to the police to complain, not the pawn store. I have no ticket or no ID, my stuff. Things heat up as she gets louder about her stolen stuff, but the employee keeps it cool, sticking to the right process. They're going to get her a television. I need your ID or the I can give you my name. I need my stuff, like, now. Well, you have to make a police report. I need my stuff, pump. In a surprising twist, the employee decides to play along with her need for drama. Customer goes all out, banging on windows, but the employee holds the fort, following store policies. When she won't leave without her way, the employee calmly shows her the door. Hey, was there an issue? Two TVs were stolen, a ring, and I just drove up here from Flint. I need my I'm not the police. All the ladies screaming. Is my is my 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 bitch. What if I'm gonna have to get ratchet? You don't pound in my window. Les is chilling at the shop when this dude, looking like he time traveled from an old western, shows up, calls himself a music teacher, claiming his student's guitar got pawned at their place. It's a pleasure to meet you, Your man. Your name is what? Vaughn. Vaughn? Yeah, I'm a music teacher. When I talk to her mother, she ended up letting me know that they put it in a pawn shop. He didn't bring the student along and spills that the guitar got pawned without filing any police report. Report, no. Otherwise, I would have to sell it back to you at retail. Pay me what we paid her. 
and then she would make rest of it. Les, being the cool head, says he can't just hand the guitar back without proof. He's all about that police report or receipt life. I got to pay you some money. Why well, do I got to pay you anything? Without a police report or a receipt showing me that that guitar is yours, I can't do it. But wait, the guy's there to throw some intimidating music background to Les, saying that he played in Detroit for 15 years. Now Les ain't shaking, he's all about that proof life. I've been playing in Detroit for over 15 years and you can't give me my back? Byron, the big security bro, steps in when the intimidation falls flat. Now he scoops him out before things go wild. Now it's time to go. It's time to go? It's time to go. Oh, you right. Come on. You're right, you're right, come on. I on his way out, he drops a line about Rick Ross and claims to be the next Rick James. Real head scratcher for Les and the crew. A wild mix of Western gear, music talk, and failed intimidation. Hey, y'all got Rick Ross in security. I'm the next damn Rick James, bitch! Les, just doing his thing, asks a customer why she wants to pawn some earrings. She straight up says she wants 350 bucks, but shuts Les down when he tries to understand why she needs the cash. To pawn these earrings. Okay. Trying to get $350 for them. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. Les being Les doesn't back down. He keeps asking why she needs the money. When the lady makes it easy. I'm coming in here with my jewelry to get money. How many kids she got? She just told you. The customer, getting defensive, says it's none of his business. Les, though, keeps digging trying to know more about her situation. Things get wild when the customer thinks Les is poking around on purpose. She's getting more and more annoyed, not liking the questions about her life. But here's the twist. Les catches her saying the earrings are real, but not with real diamonds. This gets him suspicious about the jewelry. These are real. They are real earrings. They're just not real diamonds. They are. No, they're yes, not. The they are real. Okay. Suddenly, the customer switches to bashing Les's choice of clothes, dissing him for wearing leather in the heat. Who the f leather coat you right right It's a thousand degrees. Who the f right Look, wears leather? I ain't leaving this bitch. Les's ears would ring for the rest of the day because those ladies weren't stopping talking, and it turns into a full on heated exchange with insults flying around. But Les stays cool, sticking to store rules. People that probably ain't had no f years. Supposed to be jury and law. Okay, get this. A lady goes up to Ashley saying she needs cash for her silver ring to replace her lost dentures. She spills the story about her kids flushing both sets down the toilet while playing. Got a little bit of a problem. Can't imagine why. My kids were playing around last night, broke my teeth. So they How were they playing them. Um, they flushed them. Ashley, all ears to this wild tale, wants to know more. But what I'm trying to do is sell this so I can get more. So they took both sets? The lady's looking for around $300 by selling her silver ring, but when Ashley gives her a value that falls short... Exactly. And you want how much? About three. Things get heated. I can barely give you 300 Two? But Ashley's not taking it. She stands her ground, refusing to make a deal. The lady tries a last-ditch move, asking for 10 bucks, but Ashley shuts it down. So what can you give me? Ten dollars. <laughs> Buy it. <laughs> no. Now holds up. It gets worse. The lady cranks up the confrontation and the insults. Oh, bitch. Take your silver ring and start walking, bitch. Listen. Take one enough. Ashley, not into drama, tells the lady to take her ring and keep on walking. This is what you get for messing around with Ashley. Now what? I'm here. Now what? I'm here. Keep walking. Bitch, my car's this way. Lucky Ashley not. Leslie's dealing with the situation at the pawn shop where two customers claim they pawned a $10,000 ring and want the remaining money or the ring back. They show Leslie a supposed legit receipt. But hold up. Leslie whips out a real ticket showing the difference between the two. Client brought in a $10,000 ring here and she wants to either collect the remaining money owed to her on the ring or get the ring. The customers stick to their story, saying someone printed their ticket wrong. Leslie, with the facts, points out the ticket differences, but the customers won't budge. Number one, our tickets do not have this many numbers. This is the amount of numbers that we have. This is the amount of numbers that are here. Now here's the drama. The customers bring a lawyer who checks both tickets and calls theirs a fake. 
Despite the proof, the customers deny everything, insisting the ticket's legit. Here, end of story. Somebody printed that up. That is some bull****. It may be bull****, but that's the truth. I don't know how I got mixed up or printing wrong or whatever, but this is the ticket he got from here. He didn't get it. Leslie's had enough. With tension rising, she tells security to kick him out. The customers, still complaining, get the boot. This is a fake. Now you say with them, you're not I representing us, PD. If I don't you, get my you know. ring or my money for them, how you gonna get paid? You brought in a fraudulent ticket. I didn't bring no fraudulent ticket. This you, ticket came You from just as fake as the mother gave us the ticket. How about that? No, I, I don't believe that the store gave you this ticket. Nah, well, I don't ticket. believe you a real attorney. Yeah, we ain't got a, right. This boy, oh, somebody you, better you give me people, my money. You with these him, security. Uh, excuse Have me. Have a nice day. Whatever. Nah, you Thank got you. me, bitch. Whatever. Sorry, young man. Sorry, young man. And you, we are just making it. American Jewelers, boy, and you, boy, too. I don't know what kind of mother attorney you in, but you gonna collect my. I'm gonna collect it out. A lady walks up to Ashley, claiming a purse on display is hers and she wants it back. But hold on, Ashley calmly says the purse was never pawned there. That's my purse right there. That one right there, the black one. So I want to know why it's out there. This is your purse. That's my purse right there. How do you know that's your purse? Because I know my purse. Here's the money. I want the purse. However, the lady gets all heated, demanding to check the purse. Ashley's like, sure, buy it if you want. But no, the lady goes next level, calling names and threatening to climb the counter. How do you know it's not my purse? Because that purse has been out there. Let me see it. Let me look at it. Can I look at it? If you want to buy it. I just want to look at it and make sure it's not mine. OK, first of all, I'm, I'm not, not First of all, don't talk to me like I'm a idiot. You. Give me my purse, or I'm going to come over that counter and get it myself. What's it going to be? Enter Byron, the big snuggly hero. He steps in, making sure things don't go wild. Even when the lady resists, Byron's like, time to leave. And he stops her from grabbing that purse. It's a snapshot of how pawn shop workers deal with crazy claims. Ashley keeps it by the rules, and Byron keeps the peace. Easy. Oh my God. Get, get your hands off me. Have a nice day. Let's go. Or Walk yourself out, young you. Walk get your hands off Walk me. Walk yourself Victoria. out. You know you just hit me with that pole, right? A guy walks up to Rich, claiming his new iPhone is a dud and demanding a refund. But surprise, surprise, no receipt. Three days ago, and this don't work. The camera don't work. It keeps freezing. Like that. Did you download a camera function? No, it clearly got a camera. Why would I have to download it? Just asking. What kind of phone is it? It's an iPhone, clearly. Yeah, but we haven't had one. He tries blaming some employee for selling him the phone, but the worker's like, nah, we stopped selling those phones ages ago, dude. Well, since I've been here in six months, we I have mean, no I've just seen you in we two no weeks. Force. Then things get loud. Security steps in and the guy gets the boot. But Rich, being the savvy guy that he is, ain't falling for the scam. Rich throws a curveball, suggesting they go test the phone in the parking lot. The guy doesn't know squat about the phone, and surprise, surprise again, no proof that he bought it. Scam busted. Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. Don't touch my phone, Show, show dog. him how the phone works outside. Why are you touching me? OK, just don't touch me again. I'm going to be back. I'm Well, that's all for today, folks. Make sure to hit the like button if you really enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Until the next wild encounter, this has been a glimpse into the intriguing, spicy world of Hardcore Pawn.